<laughs> Hello, and, and uh, thank you, Realtors, for joining us for today's uh, webinar. Uh, this webinar is uh, or will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash screaltors. If you find it helpful, please share it with your colleagues and please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can stay in the loop whenever we post new videos and, and content. You can also find uh, there a recording of Katie's, Katie's previous webinar, Crushing It with Canva for Real Estate uh, on our channel there as well. A very popular uh, session and, and we're thrilled to, to have uh, Katie back uh, with us today. Well, today's session on uh, chat GPT, I'm, that's what we're talking about today, uh, is going to be a, a real gateway to some powerful AI-driven conversations. In this session, uh, we're going to explore the capabilities, applications, and, and possibilities of chat GPT. And whether you're curious about its technical workings, eager to harness its potential for productivity, or simply looking to have some fun with AI, uh, you've come to the right place. So join us as we dive into the world of AI and unlock some of its potential. And and Katie, everything I just said was written by Chat GTP. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually threw that in there earlier this morning. Um, so without uh, any more of my shenanigans, without any further ado, please uh, help me welcome today's speaker, Katie Lance. She's no uh, stranger to the Realtor family. Katie is the CEO and co-founder of Katie Lance Consulting. She is a nationally known keynote speaker at conferences and events all across the country for the past 10 years. Katie has been working with agents and brokers to help them get smarter about how to use social media to grow their business. Her specialty in help is helping real estate agents and brokers achieve big results without social media spent without spending a ton of time on social media. She is also the author of the best-selling book, uh, Hashtag Get Social Smart, and the founder of the Get Social Smart Academy. Katie has been named one of the, one of the most 100 influential people in real estate by Inman News and is a frequent contributor to the Huffington Post. She lives in the San Francisco Bay Area with her husband and two beautiful boys. Thank you for joining us, Katie, and now I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick, for the warm welcome. Thank you to SCR for inviting me back to be here today. And thank you to, for all of you for tuning in. I'm so excited for our topic today. We are talking all about ChatGPT for real estate. And, you know, as we are recording this live, I would absolutely love to hear from those of you who are watching live. I would love if you would type in the chat, say hi, let us know where you're tuning in from. Let me know that you can hear me okay, that our sound is coming through loud and clear. It's always good to to double check that to make, make sure everything's coming through loud and clear. But I am I'm excited to be back as uh, Nick and and uh, you mentioned, you know, we I we did a training, uh, gosh, I guess about a month or so ago, all about Canva. So if you missed that, you can check that out. I know that replays up on the SCR YouTube page. Uh, but this is a big topic. This is something I am asked about quite a bit. I'm sure a lot of you have dabbled in ChatGPT. Maybe some of you have not yet. So whether wherever you're at in the platform, we're excited to have you here today. Um, hello, everyone who's chiming in. Hello, Eric, uh, Keisha, Joseph. We've got Rebecca, Stephen. Good to see you guys. We've got uh, Somerville in the house, Myrtle Beach. Uh, we've got all over South Carolina. We love it. Simpsonville, good to see you. Hello, Linwood. Uh, good to see you. Hello, Carol, Ray, Natalie. Welcome. Charleston's in the house. And as we're going through our time here together today, if you have a question, if you hear, uh, you know, if you've got something you want to ask me, feel free to put it in the chat. I'll try to take as many questions as we go through our time here together today. Hello, Karen. Good to see you. Hello, Harvey. Hello, Anne. I'm also going to drop my Instagram handle in the chat. Uh, I'm at Katie Lance on Instagram. I'd love if you're watching this live, click that, give me a follow. And as we're going through our time together today, if you hear a nugget, take out your phone, take a picture, take a selfie if you'd like, tag me, and I'm going to hop on Instagram later. And I would absolutely love to hear your nuggets and hear your takeaways. Um, welcome, welcome. So as Nick mentioned, I um, I reside out in the San Francisco Bay Area. You can see a few family pictures, a few uh, a few business pictures on the screen here. I was just at Inman in Las Vegas recently. I was just giving a keynote all about this topic right here, ChatGPT. Uh, you can see uh, a family picture on the screen here. 
And ultimately, the reason why I am focused on teaching social media as well as chat GPT is I'm really a big believer in that time is our most precious asset, right? Especially for you, you're a full-time realtor, broker, whatever, whatever your role is in the real estate world. And at the end of the day, time is our most precious asset. And when I look at things like social media and chat GPT and AI, I think when done right, you know, AI and chat GPT and social media, it doesn't replace the face-to-face. It doesn't replace a handshake. It doesn't replace a thank you card. It doesn't replace sitting down with someone over a cup of coffee. But when done right, there's a huge time saver in our business, right? And I just feel this deeply as a mom, as a wife, as a business owner. And so that's really what we're going to focus on today as we talk about chat GPT, but also talk about it in terms of how can it be a time saver to you in terms of uh, productivity, which is huge. Hello to all of you who just joined. Hello, Karen, Harvey, Anne. Good to see you guys. Latricia, welcome, welcome. Feel free to jump in the chat, say hi. Good to see you guys. So my promise for our time together is this. We're going to talk about ChatGPT, obviously. You're going to discover a cha- a step-by-step strategy for how to use ChatGPT for real estate without spending a whole lot of time. I've got some really cool secrets for you, plus a few surprising strategies that you need to know about. So what the heck is ChatGPT? If you have not yet uh, signed up for a free account with ChatGPT, the link is on your screen here. It's chat.openai.com. And you can go to any browser, whether you're using Chrome or Safari or whatever your internet browser is of choice, and you can go to chat.openai.com and sign up for free, uh, which is awesome. And you can see a little bit of information on the screen about what ChatGPT is. Um, You know, ChatGPT, it says on the screen, we've trained a model called ChatGPT, which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises and reject inappropriate requests. And as you'll see, we're gonna go through a lot of ideas and ways to use ChatGPT. It's very much like having a conversation with say a virtual assistant. (laughs) And so there's lots of ways that you could use ChatGPT. Specifically for our conversation today, we're really gonna focus a lot on marketing content, things like listing marketing, um, video ideas, but there's lots of stuff we're gonna go over today. So very excited about that. One thing that I think is really fascinating to, to talk about when we talk about ChatGPT is the amount of growth that it's had in a very short period of time. You know, when we look at different companies and how long it took them to get to a million users, it took Netflix three and a half years to get to a million users. It took Facebook 10 months. It took Spotify five months, Instagram two and a half months, and ChatGPT, it took five days. Five days, which is, uh, which is pretty crazy. And that's to a million users. When we think about a hundred million users, it took Netflix nearly 10 years. It took Facebook four and a half years, Instagram two and a half years, TikTok nine months and ChatGPT two months. And so, you know, it's, it's growing like leaps and bounds. And what we're seeing is we're seeing ChatGPT integrated into a lot of different tools. Many of you might be using, you know, different website tools or CRM tools. We're seeing it really integrated into a number of different tools, uh, which is exciting. So I'm going to focus on a lot of ideas and tips. We're going to talk about some do's and don'ts. And again, really the goal is for you to walk away with some new ideas that you could implement immediately. Now, I will say there's certainly some limitations to chat GPT. And I will say this anytime I'm teaching any new tool, there's not an app or tool that can replace you, right? When we think about the type of content that tends to do really well on social media, right? Look, if we look at the agents who are getting a lot of business from social media, one of the number one things that they're doing is they're showing up. They're showing their face, they're connecting, they're putting out relevant information, they are standing out in a sea of sameness, they're getting on camera. And as much as there's some great apps and tools that can help with that, there's nothing like you. There's nothing like sharing your voice, your personality, your experience. There's nothing like you spending a few minutes a day connecting and engaging with people on Facebook or Instagram. That relationship building part of it, just like we would do in real life, there's not a tool that's going to replace that, right? The other part of ChatGPT is the output that you get is only as good as the input you provide, right? So if you've tried using ChatGPT and you felt like, gosh, it doesn't really sound like me, or maybe you've tried it and it just hasn't given you the results that maybe you expected, part of the part of how to use ChatGPT really a big part of it is what you're asking and 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 sort of understanding the right way to ask certain things with ChatGPT. And I'm going to give you a bunch of ideas and examples of how to do that. A big part of ChatGPT is adding in your tone and your personality. So it's one thing to say, hey, write me a listing description for 123 Main Street. It's a whole other thing if you can say, write me a listing description for 123 Main Street 
and write it in a tone that's professional or friendly or funny or conversational. And so one of the things I'm going to challenge you to think about today is what is your tone? What is your vibe? You know, if you were to chat with a few colleagues or a few friends, what are a couple words that they might say to describe your personality, right? And it might be professional, it might be funny, it might be conversational, it might be upbeat or introverted. When we think about some of those words, using some of those descriptive words when we're using ChatGPT, it's going to help to make the output of what you're asking ChatGPT to sound more like you. And that's, a, a, again, a small thing that can make a really big difference. Now, in addition to chat GPT on your computer, there's also a mobile app. Now, if you if you go into the app store and you just search chat GPT, there's probably a million different options. What you want to make sure you download is the official app. So I've got a little screenshot on the screen here. It's a little black and white uh, icon. It says the official app. It's free. It's also ad free, which is pretty amazing. So if you're using chat GPT on your phone, there's no pop up ads, which we love. Um, and of course, ChatGPT on the computer is free as well. Now, by the way, there is a paid version to ChatGPT. I have the paid version. It's 20 bucks a month. I quickly upgraded for a number of reasons. I felt like the uh, amount of value I was getting was pretty astronomical. So I felt like it was kind of a no brainer to upgrade to a paid account. There's a few other bells and whistles uh, to having a paid account. I find that it moves a little bit faster. I think that the results are a little bit more accurate. But by no means do I think you have to have a paid account to do anything I'm talking about today. Everything we're talking about today, you can absolutely do with a free account. Also with the mobile app, it saves your history. So if you've used ChatGPT, you know that oftentimes you've got sort of a running list of all the things you've asked it. And by having the mobile app, it also syncs with your desktop app. So it saves your history, which is really nice if you're using ChatGPT on the go. And it is available for iOS and Android. It was originally only available for Apple, but is now available for iOS and Android, which we love. Okay, so we've chatted with a lot of folks about ChatGPT. We have, as Nick mentioned, a Get Social Smart Academy. We have nearly a thousand members who are inside of our membership program. And we've been chatting a lot with them about how they're using ChatGPT. What we have found is it really kind of boils down to five big categories of how a lot of agents right now in 2023 are using ChatGPT. So number one, customer service. This is a interesting way. I don't know if I would have thought of this spread out right out of the get-go, but this is actually one way that a lot of um, agents are using ChatGPT, meaning they're going into ChatGPT and they are asking ChatGPT for advice on ways to respond to clients, ways to respond to emails, um, using it as a way to just kind of improve their dialogue when it comes to communicating with prospects and leads, which I thought I find is really, really interesting. And I'm going to share a couple apps that are really great for that, specifically with ChatGPT in a minute. Uh, property descriptions. So this is something I find that a lot of agents are using. They're using ChatGPT to write property descriptions or rewrite property descriptions. You know, you might have gotten a, a listing that was on the market by another agent. Maybe you have a new listing and this listing was originally on the market for you know, 72 days by somebody else. And you want to rewrite that using ChatGPT to kind of freshen it up can be great. Market analysis, if you're using, if you're writing any kind of market data reports um, or any kind of content for market, uh, for what's going on in the market. And I'm going to share some tips for how to do that today. Um, automated emails or any kind of email newsletters. I know email is not as, an email is not as exciting to talk about as like ChatGPT or Instagram or social media, but Email marketing, I think, is hugely important. I often say, and if, I think I said this last time on our training, social media is rented ground. Social media is rented ground. We don't own it. And if you're taking notes, write that down. Social media is rented ground. We don't own it. So I think it's hugely important for every agent to build their database. But often when we think of email marketing, a lot of agents get stuck in what to write, what to say, right? We don't want to seem spammy or anything like that. So using ChatGPT to help craft email marketing can be effective. And then number five, content creation. Right? I would imagine for most of you, if not all of you, you understand that, look, the best type of content you can put out there is, is original content, content in your voice, content that has your opinion, your personality. But again, oftentimes we get a little stuck on what to post and what to say and what should the hashtags be and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so using ChatGPT and in a lot of ways, it's almost like a virtual assistant to help with that content creation can be really, really effective. So we're, we're going to dive into all of those here um, throughout our time here together today. Like I said, we've been chatting a lot with our Get Social Smart Academy members about what they're using ChatGPT for. I did a little screenshot here just, just to give you a little bit of feedback. 
Um, Cindy Carava, who's been in our academy a long time, she said, yes, just wrote a listing description with it. Game changer for me. Um, Karen says, so far I'm using AI to help me write blogs. I let people know it's my alter ego. Amy, get it? AI, me? <laughs> I just had to share that with you guys. I thought that was funny. Uh, so I guess we all need an Amy, right? An AI me. Uh, Brady says, yes, ma'am. Uh, it creates amazing flyer verbiage. So yeah, you can see, you know, again, agents are using it for all different types of things. And I would be curious, those of you watching live, have you used ChatGPT yet? Let me know in the chat just yes or no, if you've used it yet. There's no right or wrong answer. I'm sure some of you are going to say yes. I'm sure some of you are going to say no, but I'm just curious where all of you who are watching live um, are at. And by the way, if you watch this later on the replay, you can always uh, message me your answers <laughs> or you can comment uh, on the YouTube uh, video as you, as you watch the replay. I'm seeing a few people say I've used it. No, I haven't used it. Uh, Joni says used it for property descriptions. Nora says not yet, but it's everywhere. Yes. Jessica says yes to kickstart list listing descriptions. Um, Tabitha says I have used it to craft social media posts for events and announcements. Awesome. Eric says on his website. Awesome. So, oh, and someone said Grammarly. Yep, Grammarly is a great way to to use it. ChatGPT is connected to Grammarly, which is helpful. Lynn uh, Munzi says content for marketing my brokerage. Not yet. Okay, cool. So 50-50, which is uh which is which is great. So again, wherever you're at, you're gonna get uh you're gonna get some good stuff from today. Rhonda says, yes, I use it as a jump start for writing property reviews. When I'm stuck, I use it for images that are hard to find in Canva. Oh, I love that. That's great, Rhonda. So let's I want to first talk about listing marketing. And I'm gonna give you seven ways to use chat GPT for your listing descriptions. Um, and I'm gonna show you some stuff on the screen here. I've got screenshots. Um by the way, anything I'm sharing on screen, feel free to take a picture of any of the screenshots if you'd like. Um, and then and then we're actually going to go into chat GPT and I want to actually walk you through what these look like in real time. So if you haven't seen this, I think this will be really, really helpful. Uh, Amy says, three of us watching from Florence. Oh, good to see you. Thank you. Okay, so number one, when I when I look at using chat GPT for listing, I like to start with the listing description because when I think about chat GPT, I like to start with like something big that we're asking and then we're going to kind of, hone in that conversation to ask for specific things. So if you think about a listing and you think about listing marketing, at the heart of every listing is a description, right? And then from the description, then we can ask for specific pieces of marketing, um, almost like a tree, right? You've got the tree trunk and then you've got sort of the, the branches of the tree. So the first thing, and this is just a prompt um, here on your screen, it says write a 500 to 1000 word compelling property description for 123 Main Street in San Francisco. Obviously, you would adjust this for your market area. House details, four bedroom, two bath, approximately 1,800 square feet, great location, newly remodeled, gourmet kitchen, available by appointment only. Tone should be friendly yet professional, yet friendly and conversational. So this is a prompt, right? This is what we're asking ChatGPT for. So I want to just point out a couple of things. You can see I'm being specific on what I want it to, to you know, what I'm asking for, how many words. I'm giving some property details and I'm, I'm mentioning a little bit about what the tone should be, right? Tone should be professional, yet friendly and conversational. So in a second, when I go into chat GPT, we'll show you what this looks like in real time. But that's the first, the first thing I would ask for. Then it's going to give me a response. And then from there, I can ask for additional things. So number two, I can ask for bullet points, right? Because it's going to give me probably a nice long 500 to 1,000 word description. But if you want to add bullet points, at, we're going to ask for additional bullet points, which is great for... Uh, property websites. It's great for flyers, of course. Uh, number three, we can say now write this as an email. I can send to my real estate clients and prospects about this new listing. Tone should be friendly and helpful. So now we're taking that whole listing with bullet points and rewriting it into an email we could send out. Number four, now write this as a blog post I can use for my website. Make this SEO friendly, include a compelling call to action. SEO stands for search engine optimized. So we want to take that description and is, this is great if you do have a blog on your website, it'll turn it into a blog post that you can put on your website and include some sort of compelling call to action. Number five, we can say pro now provide um, five ideas for reels or TikTok videos I could create, include suggestions for video scripts, topics, and titles, right? So we've got the property description, we've got bullet points, we've got a blog post, we've got an email, and now we, we've got some ideas for reels or TikTok videos. Number six, rewrite this listing description into a storytelling format. So maybe we, we want to get creative with our content. Maybe we want to you know, do a little video where we're saying, hey, once upon a time, right, in the heart of Charleston, South Carolina, there was this four-bedroom house. And we want to get creative with that. We can do that with ChatGPT. 
Um, number seven, this is this has to do with YouTube. If you're putting any of your, uh, if you've got a you know property tour video, you're putting those up on YouTube. I often find that the biggest mistake a lot of agents make with YouTube is they forget to have a really good title or description. So you can use ChatGPT to help write that. You can say, write a YouTube description of a video for this listing, make it SEO friendly, right? Search engine optimized, include relevant keywords, a compelling call to action, and an SEO friendly title. So again, now we've got the description, we've got bullet points, we've got a blog post, we've got email marketing, we've got reels and Instagram ideas, we've got a storytelling idea, we've got a YouTube idea, and really the list can go on and on. If, if there are 10 or 15 things you do for marketing with each listing, you can use ChatGPT to help with that. You know, if you're writing ad copy or you're uh, writing copy for uh, a postcard or print ads, you can continue to add into that. So what I want to do really quick is I'm going to pull up ChatGPT. Um, let's see if I can do this really quick. And so I can show you in real time what this looks like. So I'm going to pull up a few prompts here. So I'm logged into ChatGPT right here. And when you log into ChatGPT, this is what it looks like. It's kind of a blank screen. You've got your um, kind of a, a box down here at the bottom where you can put in your prompt. On the left-hand side, there's a little button that says sidebar, and this is where all of your conversations live. So as you go through and ask ChatGPT for things, your all of those conversations will always live here, which is, uh, is kind of cool. So I'm just gonna close that just to keep it simple here. So we're gonna add in that first prompt, and I'm just gonna paste it in. Um, this was the first prompt that I shared a second ago and I changed it to Charleston. Um, so write a 500,000 word compelling property description, right? We have details, we have the tone. So we're going to hit enter and we're going to see what it comes up with. So this is one of the things I remember the first time I saw this, I was like, wow. <laughs> right. Um, because I think for a lot of agents, most agents are really good at the business of being real estate agents, but where a lot of agents struggle with is the copywriting part of it. Right. So here we go. We've got, uh, you know, just a quick glance details here. It says, if you've been searching for the perfect blend of historic charm and modern luxury in the heart of Charleston, your search ends here. Nestled on the iconic Main Street, this exquisite, exquisite four bedroom, two bath residence boasts approximately 1,800 square feet, et cetera, et cetera. And then it goes into some specifics on location, newly remodeled, gourmet kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, outdoor oasis, additional features, appointment only. Now, I think this goes without saying, but obviously we're not just going to copy and paste this and throw this up on the MLS, right? We have to do our due diligence. So I always recommend reading, double checking. Where I find that ChatGPT really can help is it's going to get you half the way there, right? Maybe even more. Maybe it'll get you 70% of the way there, but you have to make sure that you are rereading it, that you are you know, not violating anything with fair housing, that you are you know, just making sure that the information is accurate and adding in your two cents, right? So we've got that description. The second one was to add additional bullet points, right? So it already gave us some bullet points, but now we're going to ask for some additional bullet points, which again, this could be great for, again, if you've got like a single property website or you've got a flyer or you've got a, uh, any kind of print media and you want additional bullet points. And then I'm going to keep asking it for things. So you can see we've got this conversation going. Um, we've already asked for two things. The third thing we're going to ask for is that email. So I said, write this as an email. I can send out to my real estate clients and prospects. You could also ask for an email to send out to fellow real estate agents. You know, if you regularly send an email out, maybe to your fellow colleagues. I know a lot of agents have different email lists. Maybe you have a list of just colleagues and then a list of prospects. So again, we've got uh, an email here. And now I actually think this email is pretty long, to be honest with you. So I would, uh, if you get something back from ChatGPT and you're like, that's not right, you can give it a prompt. So for example, I could say, please rewrite this um, email and make it more concise, right? Or if we were reading it and it, we just felt like, gosh, that doesn't sound like me, but we could say, rewrite this, make it more concise and make it more friendly or make it you know, a little bit more conversational. And again, going back to some of those tones um, or, or words or adjectives. So I'm going to hit enter. It says, please rewrite this and make this a little bit more concise, right? And so now it's super concise, <laughs> right? So we might play with that a little bit um, and, uh, and you know, have, have kind of a happy medium between something really long and something really short. Um, let's see here. The fourth one, we are going to ask for a blog post. So again, if you've got a blog or if you are, you know, putting this on your website, we can say, now write this as a blog post I can use for my website, Right. So it's going to take that and then turn that into more of a blog post with a compelling call to action. 
Um, and you can see at the bottom here, it says, don't miss out on your opportunity. Your dream home is waiting for you at 123 Main Street, um, which is great. I'm just looking at the chat here. Ray says, curious if the prompt included to meet fair housing guidelines or something similar to that would eliminate the mention. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yes. So you can certainly do that. You can say to meet fair housing guidelines, but I still recommend that you've got to read it over carefully because even when I've done that, I still have caught little errors um, that just aren't completely accurate. So yeah, you can certainly do that. That's a great idea, but you still want to make sure that you are, you know, of course, doing your due diligence. Okay. Um, let's see here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's do another one. This one is for social media posts. So I put in here, create three social media posts for Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, include emojis, relevant hashtags, and a compelling call to action. Um, and you know, this one, I really particularly love, this is great, not just for listings, but if you're using chat GPT for social media content, I particularly love this last part, include emojis, relevant hashtags, and a compelling call to action. I know for a lot of folks, they struggle with like, what's the right hashtags. I love adding emojis to social media posts. I feel like they just kind of break up the text a little bit. They make it a little bit more fun and engaging. And again, having some sort of compelling call to action really helps. So you can see here, we've got LinkedIn post, Instagram post. Um, we've got, uh, if I scroll back up, we've got a Facebook post, which is, kind of, which is great. Um, okay, prompt number six. Now we're gonna ask for video ideas, provide five ideas for reels or TikTok videos, include suggestions, video scripts, topics, and titles. Um, and so we're going to hit enter and this is a, this is a big ask. So this one's probably going to take a few minutes to load because <laughs> we're asking for topics and titles and scripts and all kinds of good stuff. Um, and so it's going to go through and give us that a day in the life of one, two, three main street. You can see it's got the title uh, and the script is pretty short. If you wanted to say, write a more detailed script, you could certainly do that. I'm not a huge script person, to be honest. If I'm doing a video, I find re reading a script is pretty difficult. But for some people, they you need you might you find comfort in having a little bit more of a script. So, you know, it really kind of depends on your uh, on your preference here. But you can see we've got the the different suggestions, five different ideas, five different topics, five different scripts, um, which is uh, which is really great. Okay, got a couple more, and then we're going to go back to um, my slides here. The last prompt here: write a YouTube description for this listing, make it SEO friendly, include relevant keywords, and a compelling call to action. Um, I'm just looking at the chat here. Rhonda says, I use it a lot for listings, or if you use it a lot for listings, you'll start to notice similarities. So I always change that. Yes, it, she says, it got me started. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you, Rhonda. What I find is as you start to use chat GPT, you'll start to notice when you look at other people's descriptions, you will you might say to yourself, I think that was chat GPT. And so one of the ways to get away from things sounding like it's chat GPT is again, reading it, rereading it. And to be honest with you, and this is probably gonna sound a little old school, but whenever I'm using chat GPT, I will often copy it from chat GPT. I will put it in like a Word document or a Google document. And again, this is gonna sound a little old fashioned, but I will print it up and I will literally read it out loud. So if I've asked chat GPT to write an email newsletter for me or a YouTube description or um, it, anything really, I will copy, take it from ChatGPT, put it into a document, print it out and literally read it out loud. And when you read something out loud, you will quickly be able to catch like, oh, I would never say that word or that part doesn't sound like me. And it's a really easy way to just make that little tone shift quickly and easily. And often it's just adjusting a couple little things to make it sound better. Rhonda says, I love the old fashioned approach. Yes, that's how I proofread too. I've got to print it out. Like I love technology, but there's just something about pen and paper, right? So, okay, you can see on the screen here, this is that YouTube description, right? Luxury living, living in Charleston. We got the description. I love that it included emojis. It's got some hashtags, which was awesome as well. All right, so let me go back to my slides here and we'll get into some additional ideas. James says, do I have to pay to use ChatGPT? No, it's totally free. There is a paid version. The paid version is $20 a month um, and it gives you, the paid version I find, the difference between free and pay, I find the free version, especially in the beginning, tended to crash a lot. It's gotten a lot better. Um, I have just found the paid version is a little bit more accurate. It's a little faster, but that's just a personal opinion. I think you could absolutely use the free version for quite some time. Okay, so I already gave a bunch of listing ideas. I've got some additional ideas here on the screen. Again, it's great for property descriptions, social media posts, reels, TikTok ideas, video scripts. Um, 
James says, my free version is not working. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes James, the free version is a little buggy where sometimes it works one day and sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't work the next day. And that's actually for me, why I upgraded to the paid version. So that might be what you're experiencing. Um, <clears throat> da, da, da. Okay. So we've got YouTube descriptions for property tours and videos, blog posts and, or email newsletters, ad copy for Facebook ads or print ads. Um, I saw someone ask if I could go back a couple slides really quick. A couple of you wanted to take pictures of this really quick. So I'm going to put this on the screen so you can take a quick picture if you'd like to go through it. Okay. So here, the first one is the listing description and we're going to switch the slides in three, two, one, boom. Okay. Here's two, three, and four bullet points, email marketing, blog post. Um, I'm just looking at the chat here. Deborah says the free version could be limited due to the server being busy or the amount of users. Yes, absolutely. All right, I'm going to switch to the next slide, five, six, and seven. And by the way, this is all being recorded. So you can always watch this back, hit pause, and take a screenshot. Um, five was video ideas. Number six was rewrite it in the storytelling. Number seven, YouTube description. Okay, hopefully we got it. If not, you can always message me. Feel free to message me or email me if you missed anything. I can always send it to you. Um, again, on the screen, we've got uh, a lot of stuff I already covered. YouTube description, blog post, ad copy. And at the bottom, again, we've just got some some points that we already talked about, oh, right? Always add in your personality, always double check for fair housing, code of ethics violations, including biases, which I think is important. The other thing I just wanna point out really quick, um, if you've been on any of our trainings before, I think I've mentioned last time, um, I wanted to also reference our YouTube channel. Um, I've got a little image here of some of the videos we have. If you have followed our YouTube channel at all, we have a bunch of training recently about ChatGPT. And I'll just point this out really fast just while I'm on this subject just to show you guys super fast, um, because a lot of the stuff that you probably have questions about, most likely I've answered, um, which is great. So if you're looking for some additional training, I'm going to just drop my YouTube channel link in the chat here. Um, but if you go into my channel under playlists, I have playlists on different topics. And one of them is all on chat GPT. So this first one down here is all on chat GPT. And there's a bunch of training on that. So Feel free to check that out. You don't necessarily need to, you know, go over there right now, but at some point, if you're looking for some additional training, um, just go to my channel. And like I said, either search for ChatGPT or look at the playlist, um, which is uh, which is right there. Okay, let me just go back to my other screen here. And I saw another question come through here. Um, Sarah says, if we, send, if we send you an email, can you email me the slides? I'd like to go over their office. Um, we're not sharing the slides, but I'm happy to share some of my notes. I've got some additional links also, Sarah. So yeah, feel free to reach out to me um, and I can share some of my notes and links and stuff like that that I've got here on the screen. Okay, so I've mentioned this, obviously how important it is to stay compliant with fair housing and code of ethics. Um, you know, we could probably do a whole presentation just about that, but I think obviously there's some things that come into play. So we want to look for discriminatory language, accuracy of information, confidentiality, professional competence, supervision, accountability, just, you know, all the things that we, that, that you know to do when you are doing any kind of marketing, right? So I think it goes without saying, we don't want to just blindly uh, copy and paste, which is, uh, which is key. Exactly. So I think, one thing to think about too, when we think about all the stuff that we're creating with ChatGPT is we want to think about how we can get organized, not just with all the copy, but just with our marketing in general. And so I've got a few of my favorite tools on the screen here that I love in terms of just getting, getting organized. Uh, number one, Dropbox. I've used Dropbox for years. Specifically, I use Dropbox with all my video content. So like I said earlier, social media is a rented ground. I don't think you should have your videos just live on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube. All of my videos are saved in Dropbox. It's really easy with our video editor. We can share them back and forth. It's just an easy way to store them. Google Drive is also a great option as well. Trello, Asana, or Monday.com. I mentioned those three because if you have an assistant, if you are someone who works as part of a team, if there's someone other than you who is working on your business, using some sort of project management tool to keep you organized with your marketing, I highly recommend, um, we've used all of these before. We've used Trello, we've used Asana. Currently we use monday.com and those are all project management tools. I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole, but when we think of chat GPT and your marketing with chat GPT, there's a lot of things you could do with each listing. So why not, re why are, we don't want to reinvent the wheel every single time with a lot of these project management tools, like for example, monday.com or Asana or even Trello you can set up templates. So you can say, okay, every time I have a new listing, 
here's the 30 things that we're going to do with that listing, or here's the 15 things. And then having a workflow for what happens when, right? Uh, and ChatGPT can certainly play a part in that. If you're using ChatGPT to write, help write your listing descriptions or help come up with content ideas, have, getting organized with your marketing, right? Getting organized with what you're doing is key. I personally love Google Docs and Google Drive. They're free. It's easy. You know, for me, when I've got all of my information over in um, ChatGPT, I often will copy and paste it over into a Google Doc. That way it's all in one place. And honestly, if I was an agent, the way I would organize this is for every listing I had, I would go into ChatGPT and everything I'm asking ChatGPT for, I would put into one Google document. So if I had one Google document, it would be one, two, three Main Street. And that Google document would have the listing description, the YouTube description, the video ideas, the social media posts, just everything. And it's all in one place, right? So then when you're ready to paste it, to look at it, to read it, to do whatever you're going to do with it, you've got it all in one place. <laughs> you've got it all in one place and you're not like hunting for it, right? Especially important, as some of you mentioned, sometimes chat GPT crashes. So you don't want to like create a bunch of stuff and then go back and go, oh, wait, it's not there, right? So use ChatGPT, but then again, copy, paste it, put it somewhere else, right? Which is key. Um, I saw a couple of people say in the chat about the recording. Yes, this is being recorded for sure. Um, and yes, Michael says this webinar will be posted to the SCR YouTube channel. Ah, awesome. Thank you guys. So in addition to listings, of course, there's a lot of ways we can use ChatGPT, right? On the screen here, we've got 10 ways to use ChatGPT for social media and content ideas. Um, I also have a screenshot of a video where I go much deeper into this whole topic. That video is over on my YouTube channel. Uh, but again, number one, writing MLS descriptions, rewriting MLS descriptions, um, landing pages. You know, if you're doing any kind of ads or you want to drive people to, for, you know, to like, in terms of like lead generation, you're trying to generate leads online, you're trying to generate you know, people to sign up for a free CMA or to sign up to, uh, to connect with you. Landing pages can be kind of tricky, right? And so using ChatGPT to write some copy for landing pages. Create compelling ad copy if you're running Facebook ads or Instagram ads or any kind of advertising. Social media posts for various platforms. And I find ChatGPT really shines when you can be specific. When you can say, not just write me a social media post, but write me a post for Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, or whatever platform you're, you're writing for. Um, email newsletters. We've been sending out email newsletters for years. We have an email newsletter that goes, up, uh, goes out every Saturday. And ironically, out of everything that we publish, so many people will come up to us and say, oh my gosh, I love your Saturday newsletter. <laughs> and it's just something that we've kind of become known for over the years. I absolutely recommend email newsletters. Now, you don't necessarily need to send one out every week, but maybe you email out one every once a month or once a quarter. And I know with our, our newsletters, a lot of times our newsletters are linking back to other information we've already shared. So if you are on our email list and you get our email newsletter, you might get a link to a YouTube video that we already shared a couple of weeks ago or a Facebook post from three days ago or an Instagram post from five days ago. It's a way to really sort of share content that we've already published, but you may have missed. And oftentimes with email newsletters, we get, again, kind of, you know, stuck on, on, on writing things and, and making them sound, you know, creative and, and unique. And ChatGPT can be really, really helpful in that. Uh, LinkedIn articles, you know, LinkedIn oftentimes is kind of the set it and forget it platform where you set it up at one point, but maybe you haven't done a whole lot with it since. But LinkedIn, I think, is a great platform. It is one of the only professional social media platforms. And I think one of the underused things that a lot of people don't use LinkedIn for is the ability to write articles, to write newsletters. And you can use ChatGPT to help with that as well. Um, number seven, if you want to try to get more media exposure, you could uh, use it to help you write articles that you submit to your local media, your local news stations, your local newspaper. If you've ever opened up the newspaper or turned on your local station and wondered, well, how the heck did that realtor <laughs> get on you know, that channel or featured in that article? Oftentimes they, they reached out, you know, they reached out and said, hey, I have a great story idea or here's my opinion on this. Now, oftentimes a news organization is not going to run a story about your listing <laughs> unless maybe you've got someone famous. Uh, but, you know, thinking about what's your unique unique take on things and using ChatGPT to kind of help craft those ideas as well. Um, number uh, eight, compelling sub email subject lines. We've talked a little bit about email marketing. Oftentimes what makes the difference between is someone going to open your email or not is the subject line, right? Number nine, video ideas and outlines. Uh, number 10, maybe you've thought about creating a podcast, right? Help You could help 
use ChatGPT to help come up with ideas for your podcast. We have a podcast. We published a, a new episode each and every month. Uh, and I just used ChatGPT for this recently. I, I went into ChatGPT and I said, I have a podcast. I'm interviewing so-and-so about this topic. Can you come up with five to 10 ideas for questions I could ask my guest? So maybe you want to interview someone. Maybe you want to interview your local lender, or your local stager, your favorite uh, bakery owner, and you've never interviewed someone before. Ask, ask ChatGPT for a few um, ideas for questions. As a bonus, you can also use ChatGPT to rewrite your content in other languages. So if you're someone who speaks a second language, maybe English is not your first language, using it to rewrite is, uh, is really, really uh, creative. Uh, Heather says, could it also write an email campaign? Say maybe four emails to send out to current leads that are renting. Yes, you could absolutely do that. You could say, you know, I'm a real estate agent. Please create a uh, four-part email campaign. This is going to go to current real estate leads that are renting right now. Um, and the goal, and I would include what the goal is, right? The goal is to give them helpful information and to um, encourage them to move from being a renter to being a homeowner, right? So yeah, it can absolutely do that. And I would, like I said, include what is your desired goal in that? So yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. So as I said earlier, chat GPT is only as good as the input you provide. And, you know, it's funny, I was chatting with my boys about <laughs> chat GPT recently, my youngest, who's almost 13, he got this right away. He's like, mom, I get it. Like your output is only as good as your input. I'm like, exactly, right? It's only as good as the data that you're putting into it. And what I've realized from using chat GPT for a, almost a year now, it came out in November, 2022, is that by being able to think about what you're asking in a couple different almost like a formula, right? Kind of a three-part formula makes a big difference. So I've got on the screen kind of this really simple three-part formula I find works well for anything that you're asking for chat GPT. This is a great thing to share if you're sharing anything to social media, if you're taking a picture of anything. The first thing is you want to put in chat GPT, act as who you are. So act as a real estate agent in Charleston, South Carolina, or Somerville, South Carolina, or wherever you're at. Act as a real estate agent or whatever your title is in this city, in this state. And then we want to ask for what we want to ask for. I need you to create an email marketing campaign. I need you to come up. I need you to create a um, Instagram Reels content calendar. I need you to come up with, you know, 10 ideas on how to promote my latest listing. Then we want to add in what our tone should be. So the tone should be, again, whatever those adjectives might be, happy, friendly, uh, luxurious, whatever tone you uh, you know, again, sort of you feel like is your vibe, right? We want to add a few tone adjectives in. And then the last part is show as format. So do we want to show this as a spreadsheet? Do we want to show this as an email? Do we want to show this as a blog post? Do we want to show this as an article? So we want to think about what is we're asking and then show it as whatever format. So again, I find that this sort of three-part formula tends to get the most results because we're being specific, right? Who are you? What do you need it to do? What's the tone? And then where? what should you, what's the format, right? If, if that makes sense. Uh, Tabitha says, I love this formula. Yay, good. And if you think of this formula, every time you're asking something, whether it's a YouTube description, whether it's a content calendar, whether it's a lead generation ideas, um, whatever that might be, it's going to help you with that. So format, again, by the way, some people get stuck on that last part of format. Format could be, again, it, format could be bullet points. Format could be a list. Format could be a spreadsheet, again, a blog post, an article, an email. So kind of thinking about what we want that format to be. Uh, Joseph says, you input these lines in the custom instructions area. I just input them when I'm in chat GPT and there's that box. It's it's how I'm writing my prompt. So, so I will say, act as a real estate agent in Charleston, South Carolina. I need you to create an email marketing campaign uh, to generate more leads for my real estate business. The tone should be friendly and professional. Show as a bullet point list with 10 ideas, right? So I'm just kind of typing that all out into a few sentences into ChatGPT. Yeah, it's one big prompt, Joseph. Yeah, one big prompt. Yeah. So I shared this idea of putting in the right adjectives or prompts. And I have on the screen 10 different ideas for prompts and adjectives that I find to, to be really effective. Now, you're not going to want to use all 10 of these because some of these are contradictory. But what I would recommend is either take a picture of this or write down some of these and then pick two or three that resonate with you. Pick two or three that resonate with you. So for me, I tend to say my tone is professional, friendly, and conversational. 
For me, that's just my vibe. I find that works really best for me. That may not be your vibe. So I have some other words on the screen here. Compelling, friendly, professional, playful, detailed, formative, conversational, funny, luxurious. This works really well for luxury listing, by the way, luxurious, thorough. So again, picking a couple words that um, that can help. You, you can also get really creative, right? For example, let's say you're someone who is really funny. You're just kind of like a natural jokester. Um, and maybe you're a big fan of the show, the TV show Friends. You could write in your prompt, you could say, write this as if Chandler Bing is talking, right? We could have fun with that. Maybe you're a huge Oprah fan. You could say, write this as if this was on the Oprah Winfrey show. So again, that may or may not get you the output that you want, but you might start to think about different things that resonate with you. Maybe, you know, you're a huge Seinfeld fan, <laughs> whatever it might be. And you can use some of that sort of pop culture references to sort of help craft your tone, which is fun. Casey says, how current is the free version attached to the events? Is the paid version connected to the internet? Yes. So the, uh, so ChatGPT still only goes up to September, 2021, as far as data, but there are some plugins that I'm going to mention in a minute that help uh, connect ChatGPT to the internet to make it more current. So I've got those in just a second here. Um, Jessica says, can you show my last screen for just a second? Sure. Yeah. So this is the last screen right here. Feel free to take a quick picture of it. Um, again, that's sort of that three-part formula. Okay. Let me just look at my notes really quick here. And we're going to keep moving because we've got about 15 minutes left. Hopefully this has been helpful so far. Um, this is a little bit of a fire hose. I know there's a lot to cover as well. Okay, cool. All right, so another idea that I'm gonna give you is if you are stuck on what to ask ChatGPT, this is what I call like the million dollar question. You could say, can you help me do A, B, and C? For example, can you help me come up with some lead generation ideas? Can you help me grow my business in the fourth quarter? Can you help me come up with some creative ways to sell this listing that's been on the market for three months? <laughs> oftentimes we, we don't really know exactly what we need help for, but we have kind of a general idea. So putting in the chat GPT, can you help me do this? Can you help me write a listing description? Can you help me, um, you know, whatever it might be. And a lot of times it's going to say yes, or it might say yes, but I need this. So a great follow-up question is to say, what do you need for me to complete this task? So you might say, can you help me create a email marketing campaign to help me generate real estate leads? What do you need for me to do this? And so ChatGPT is going to come back and say, yes, and this is what I need. And generally what's going to happen is they're going to give you a list. It's going to list out like maybe eight to 10 things of things they need. And sometimes when we get that list, we go, oh, that's too much, <laughs> that's too much effort. But I can tell you from experience that if you take the time to respond to what it's asking, it's going to help. Again, the output's going to be so much better. So again, if you're asking, I don't know, for our lead generation ideas or for email marketing ideas or social media content ideas. And then specifically going back and answering, and it'll, it'll ask things like, what's your goals? What are your desired results? What's your brand all about? It's going to ask you some of those questions. The better you can answer those questions, the better the output is going to be. Uh, Marcia says, very helpful. Okay, good. Awesome. Thanks, Marcia. I want to share some of my favorite um, additional apps and tools. So um, if you use Chrome as your browser, there are some great Chrome extensions that I absolutely love. This one in particular is great. This is called ChatGPT Writer. So if you just go into Google and type in ChatGPT Writer or you go to the Chrome store, this will add this as a Chrome extension to your browser. This particular um, ChatGPT extension is really great for one-to-one -one emails. So what do I mean by that? Well, We've all gotten emails, or maybe it's just me, but I'm sure you have too, where you get an email and you're like, oh, like it's a delicate email. You need to respond in a professional but empathetic manner. Maybe you need to talk to a client about a price reduction or there's something just that you need to have in writing, but you want it to come across as professional, assertive, but maybe empathetic. So you can use ChatGPT Writer and you can say, you can open this up and say, I need to write an email about X, Y, and Z. This is a desired output I would like. And ChatGPT Writer is great for coming up with ideas for one-to-one -one emails, right? Now, ChatGPT is great for coming up with email campaigns and lead generation ideas and email newsletters. But for like the one-to-one -one emails, that sort of customer service we talked about, I love this. Um, this is, again, a Chrome extension. It's free, which is great. 
one thing we want to be careful though is we want to not we want to make sure we're not putting confidential information into chat gpt writer so we don't want to include names or super specific details about addresses prices things like that uh, obviously be, be careful with confidentiality but it can be great just for helping craft that one-to-one -one message which is great christy says in the chat does chat gpt learn from your history and your business so it can easily build upon it it does, but I find that it's still really important every time I use ChatGPT to add in your tone. So I still find that that's important. Um, another thing that you can use ChatGPT for is to help create some evergreen content. So if you followed me for any period of time when it comes to training, you know I'm a big believer with content. To put out content that's not just about the market, but stuff that's evergreen, stuff that's timeless. So things like who pays for what, how to find a lender, and the biggest mistakes every first time home buyer makes. Those commonly asked questions, those are great pieces of content that you can share today, but they're, they're shareable three months from now, six months from now, 12 months from now. It's kind of this idea of having this 24 seven library of content that's working for you when you're sleeping, when you're on vacation. And there's a lot of ways you can use ChatGPT to create that type of content. There's some ideas on your screen, like writing an email newsletter, writing an outline, writing a social media post. And the idea on the screen is just, uh, you know, kind of a generic, first time home buyer mistake idea. Um, but I would encourage you to really think about incorporating evergreen and timeless content into your, into your marketing mix. Um, it's not the type of content that that's going to make you go viral. You know, you're going to, you're not going to get a million hits because you did a video on, you know, the, the tips to moving to Charleston, but it's the type of content that over the course of time helps to establish your credibility. It helps to generate leads in the long term, and again, can just really help uh, because you can share it multiple times. You don't have to just share it one and done, which is great. Um, crafting market reports. So a couple of you asked me about market reports. Even though ChatGPT's knowledge is only up to September 2021, you can still use ChatGPT for a, 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 for a, a couple different ways. So one of the ways that you can use it for market reports is you can research the data from your MLS, organize the data, and then put it into ChatGPT. So you might say, hey, I need you to write me a market report about this, and then you're putting in the details, right? You're putting in the data. Obviously review, revise. I think visuals are key. ChatGPT is not really meant for visuals, but you can take what you've created and then put it into something like Canva, which, you know, shameless plug, if you missed my Canva webinar, <laughs> I did recently watch that because uh, that's a great companion to everything we're talking about today. But using Canva to create infographics or any type of graphics to support market reports are great. Now, you can access the internet through ChatGPT for market reports. And you can do that if you add in this Chrome extension that's on your screen. Web Chat GPT is free. This is a great Chrome extension to be able to access the internet. And when you add this to ChatGPT and you use ChatGPT, one of the things that you'll see is as you ask it for things, it's going to reference the internet. So for example, let's say you go and go, please write me a 500 word market report on the state of the real estate market in September, 2023 in Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. By using web chat GPT, it's connecting to chat GPT and it'll give you that response. Remember earlier when I went into chat GPT and asked for something, it gave me a response. But when you use web chat GPT, it's going to give you that response, but it's also going to give you citations. It's going to cite its citations. So it's good because it's going to give you data. It's going to say, you know, medium price is this or average days on market is this. And when you read through what it gives you, it's going to give you citations. So you can actually read through and click on and see where is that data coming from? Is that data coming from NAR? Is it coming from Inman? Is it coming from the real deal? Is it coming from Curbed? Is it coming from... Real trends, is it coming from Redfin? Like, where is it coming from? So again, just like with anything, especially data, we wanna double check it. We wanna make sure it's accurate. If I'm using web chat GPT for anything, especially market reports, read what it has written you, but then again, click through and look at each one of those data points to just make sure that what it's referencing is up to date. It's not referencing an article from like three years ago. And it's, it's referencing something that you feel is a credible source, right? Which is key. Um, Joseph says, if you put an image of a house, you are listing in a chat GPT, would that be a bad idea? You can't, as of right now, you can't upload images into chat GPT, only, um, only words. Um, Christy said, will data be updated for September, 2021? Hopefully, hopefully soon. Yes. 
Um, Whitley said, is the paid version only through 2021 also? Yes, it is. So whether you have the free version or the paid version, yes. Um, a couple other tools that I think are really cool to add into ChatGPT. This is a free one, Search GPT for Chrome. So one of the nice things about this plugin is when you're using Google, you're on Google and you're searching for something. If you have this plugin on the right-hand side of Google, it'll also show ChatGPT, which is kind of cool. So, you know, if you're Googling something and you're on Google by having this Chrome extension, Search GPT, it'll also show um, ChatGPT on the right-hand side of your search results, which is kind of cool also. So that again, that's search GPT for Chrome. Um, the other one that is really fun is called voice uh, control for chat GPT. If you're someone who, you know, if you're someone like me, I, I love using voice control. I love using Siri. Sometimes that gets me in trouble when I'm trying to text <laughs> and Siri thinks I'm saying something, but I'm not really saying something. Uh, but voice control is actually pretty accurate. Voice control for chat GPT will allow you to speak into chat GPT. So if you want to say, hey, write me a listing description for 123 Main Street, and you want to speak it instead of typing it all out, voice control for chat GPT uh, is really, really kind of cool. So I love that one. A um, few additional resources, uh, additional AI tools and resources, um, List Assist, Reimagine, and of course, Canva. Full disclosure, I have not used List Assist or Reimagine, but a lot of folks that we've worked with in the Academy have, and they recommend them. I'm not affiliated with any of these tools. I just want to share some tools that we have heard um, a lot of people are, are using and are exploring. I think the biggest thing I would say with AI is we are seeing AI integrated into so many different tools, so many different resources. A lot of these tools, if even if they are paid, many of them do have a free, um, free trial where you can try it out and see if it's a good fit. Of course, Canva, as we talked about last time, there are a ton of AI tools available in Canva, which is really kind of cool text to image, there's magic design, magic write, magic edit, all kinds of stuff that's been integrated, uh, which is really, really kind of cool. Tabitha says, my husband already complains about all my Chrome extensions. <laughs> yes, I know. Well, what's a few more, right? What's a few more extensions? So I've got about, um, let me just look at our time here. We've just got about two or three minutes left as we get to the end here today. I've got just a few things left. I've got three slides left, but if you have any additional questions, feel free to put those in the chat. Uh, make sure you stay to the end because I've got an important link that I want to make sure you guys get here. There is not an app or tool that will replace you, right? I said this in the beginning. I think this is super important. I think especially as we see more and more people use ChatGPT because it's so easy, because it's so accessible, because anybody could use it, it's going to be more important than ever that we make sure that you show up on camera, that you share your opinion, you share your voice. I love ChatGPT for idea generation, for all the different things we talked about but it will not replace you. It will not replace you connecting and you showing up. Real estate is still a relationship business and it's it's all about people. It's all about relationships. Context, tone, and your lived experience are the keys, right? So remember the the, the better your, your input, the better your output, right? So if your input is just kind of, you know, generic, you're going to get kind of that generic output. So making sure we add in our personality, our tone, our lived experience, which is hugely important. Okay, as we get to the end here today, if this was helpful, I hope this was helpful for you. Let me know in the chat if this was helpful, if you learned a couple things, um, we'd love your feedback. If this was helpful for you, the next steps I would love for you to do, if you are at a place where you can scan this QR code, I have my free ChatGPT cheat sheet. Um, if you enjoyed this, I put together a pretty detailed cheat sheet with some examples and ideas and some different thoughts and topics around prompts and just really dug into a lot of the stuff that we talked about today. I, I only had an hour today. So feel free to take out your phone, scan this. This is going to take you to katielance.com slash chat GBT. It's just going to ask for your name and email, and then we'll send this to you. It's a, I want to say a seven or eight page PDF. As I said earlier, I'm a little old fashioned. So print it up, read it over. Um, and as you start to use chat GBT, whether you are new or whether you've been using this, you know, for almost a year, like I have, I know this is going to be really helpful. Um, also, I know I answered, I think most of your questions, but feel free to reach out to me again. You can reach out to me, um, through Instagram, through Facebook, through email. I've got my email on the screen here. Uh, and I'm going to drop that in the chat here. So you guys can always email me katie at katielance.com. And I'm going to drop my, um, link here to this guy, katielance.com slash chat GPT. So if you click that, that'll take you to where this QR code is. Um, okay, let me look at the chat here and see what other questions we might have. Um, Jenny says, thank you for this great webinar. Descriptions are always a challenge. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Heather says, so helpful to give me the insights I needed. Yay, my pleasure. 
Uh, let's see here. I saw a question come through. One concern I've seen with ChatGPT regarding uh, citing data and providing information. It's been known to make up sources to fulfill the request. Huh, that's interesting. I haven't seen that. Um, I would recommend that when you are using ChatGPT for citing data that you have that web chat GPT plugin. If you're asking for data and you're not using that plugin, then there is the chance of the data being inaccurate. So I like to use web chat GPT when I'm asking for things that have data that I, where I need to double check that data. So that's what I would recommend is use that. Um, and then obviously when you are asking for things that require data, we want to double check it. We want to do our due diligence. And honestly, that's why I found a lot of agents, especially ones that we work with inside of our academy, oftentimes they prefer to go to their MLS or their broker, get the data, get the numbers, and then go into chat GPT and say, okay, I'm going to give you the data. Now take this data and make it in an easy to read format. Make this in a newsletter that's interesting to read, right? So that would be a couple of things to, uh, to think about in terms of that. That's, that's a great question. Um, bum, bum, bum. Maggie says, curious if the prompt included to meet fair housing guidelines or something similar to that would eliminate some of the items um, like a conventional playground, but not great for kids. Yeah, you could certainly do that. We've seen a lot of agents who have tried that where they're using their prompts and they've added in there to meet fair housing guidelines. I'll be honest with you. I've seen mixed results with that. Uh, I, I think that's definitely an area that ChatGPT needs to probably improve on, to be honest with you. So um, yeah, I, it's worked okay, but it also hasn't worked okay. So you still need to kind of do your due diligence. So thank you, Amanda. Amanda says, great webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Lindwin Munzee. Appreciate that. All right. Awesome. Well, I want to be respectful of our time. I know we went over by a few minutes. Um, if you have any other additional questions, feel free to email me. I know this recording will be posted up on the SCR um, YouTube channel. Um, I just want to give a big shout out to all of you who attended live, or if you're watching this later on the replay, as I said, never going to be getting time is our most precious asset. So I'm so grateful for your time to today and just so thankful to SCR. It's always a pleasure coming here. Um, you guys are just awesome to work with. It's uh, it's really been a blast. So I can't wait to see what you create. Can't wait to see what you do. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat one more time and see if I missed anything here. Thank you, Constance, for your um, kind words. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Nora, Kathy, Joseph. You guys are awesome. All right, my friends, um, unless anyone from the team needs to chime in and say anything else, I don't know if I think Michael might still be on the line here. If he needs to chime in and say anything else, feel free to do that. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up here in just a second, give you back your afternoon. Uh, thank you, Sharon. You guys are awesome. All right, my friends, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm sending you virtual high fives, virtual hugs, <laughs> and I can't wait to see what you do with ChatGPT. All right. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you real soon. Bye, everybody.